Hello, I'm Malcolm Haslett. We're right at the start of the Adelaide Fringe. What's happening? What's new? Our guests will answer that next on Our Time. And welcome our special guests in this episode. In the first segment are Sebastian Annian Cooper and Andy Baker, who are doing something special during this year's Fringe. Special because it's not one of the usual fringe venues. Tell us about it, Sebastian. Thanks very much, Malcolm, for having us on the show. A pleasure. Well, well, where did it start? Uh, well, so first of all, COVID happened. Oh, well. And COVID's caused a lot of problems to all venues. Yes, yes. And so you own and run a dance school, basically. Or yes. A, it's more of a social school. Yeah, look, it, yes. both. Yeah, it's uh, the dance studio is called Quick Steps Dance Club Studio, and uh, we're on. I'm doing it now. I'm doing it on now. Look, I'm Street. Yes, that's exactly. Finally, there was uh, a camera down there to see. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, look, just like everyone in the industry, we were completely. Uh, well, it's been a very tough two years, but particularly, you know, we thought everything was going really well leading up to the end of the year. We've been promised all these uh, freedoms, and then. Was it December 28th? Omicron Just, happened. Yes. And I've that, had it. I've had the, the, the dreaded Lurgy. Omicron thingy. Yes. Well, if you're vaccinated, it was nothing, really. It was yeah. just like having a head cold. Yeah, but uh, d despite that, they, they uh, did come down with all the restrictions. They brought yep. them all in. So, so you couldn't do what you'd planned in your studio. Yes. So you had to find somewhere bigger. Well, we had to do something. Like a grassy knoll. Uh, yes, and we did we find a grassy knoll. Um, you did, Light Square in Adelaide. Yes, yes. Now, how did this come about with the city of Adelaide? Well, it's, you know, I, I was sitting there on the 28th December cancelling all these events and feeling very uh, despondent and very down, and I thought, how about I hassle the city of Adelaide and see if they let us build an outdoor dance floor? And, and they gave you? Permission and a little bit of money, so... Thanks to the City of Adelaide and the, uh, yes. the uh, development agency that's with the uh, City of Adelaide. And uh, I got in contact with this bloke here. He's well, we'll bring you into it. But So you've got a part of Light Square, yep. which is one of the four squares right in the heart of Adelaide, which is brilliant for you. Wonderful. But you can't dance. Well, you can dance on grass, but it's not the type of dancing that needs grass. Yeah. And so... We needed to dance. Were more. you dancing already? Oh, I've been dancing now for... 19 years. And boy, are you tired. <laughs> no, I love it. <laughs> love every bit of it. But, but the, beauty, the, the beauty is that you knew what to do about this. I've laid dance floors in Adelaide, in the Philippines and in Melbourne. So I knew what I had to do with the dance floor. Um, the but whole you're thing, on grass and it's usually wood. It is a wooden dance floor. Yeah. Um, we came up with this only three weeks before the dance floor was down and danced on that Seb asked... Ben and myself, is it feasible? Is it possible? Yes, it's possible. Is it feasible? Is it viable? Probably not, but we're going to do it anyway. <laughs> well, so, that's what makes things happen, isn't so, it, really? You've just got to say, rightio, tunnel vision, let's move on. We've got some vision, speaking of vision, of what it will look like during the fringe with people dancing on the floor. But the story is bigger than that. Yes, well, the engineering had to be done. We were going to be on a hard paved surface to start with. We ended up on an undulating lawn. Um, we got the engineering done, and then Seb tells me we've got a circus on the floor, so we had to redo all the engineering, put more timber down. We had to source it, which is very hard at the moment, and uh, we got into it with a team of five of us and just the dance floor area. And two weeks later, we were ready to lay it. It's amazing. Let's have a look at the vision because it's not only the dance floor. Behind the dance floor, there's a sort of pop-out stage that Ben... We all know him as Ben FX in the business that Ben Phillips has organised. And um, it just looks great because the, there's a stage within a the truck. van, the yeah, truck, it's... that opens up with all the sound gear and lighting comes out of it and... Which one of those three girls are you? Oh, three <laughs> people are you. <laughs> so, um, so you can see there, though, that literally the stage is on the grass. Yes, that's the, the dance floor. The stage comes out from the truck, and it's the theatre truck. Mm -hmm. And the theatre truck can roll into anywhere, and within 24 hours you've got a full uh, theatre stage. As soon as that, three and, hours you can get it up and oh, running. So. 
24 hours from call anywhere in the state, and he's got all the lights, all the all, all the, the sound. Uh, sound. Have you got food trucks there as well? We do have some coming in. Working on that. So, uh, yes, it's going to be quite the sight. So, already, this is terrific because it's already opened and it's all starting to work beautifully and smoothly as originally planned. Because that's the thing about the Fringe. Um, these pop-up venues have to happen very quickly. Where did you source the floor from? I know you made it, but where did you get the wood from? Ah, that's over to me. Um, building supplies in Adelaide. Um, there was uh, Softwoods, um, Big River and uh, Rainers. Rainers supplied most of it. And, uh, yeah, I just had to ring around until I could find where until the material was available. Right. And, uh, and just get it to site, down and to Innovation Engineering. So you're the type of bloke that will work 24 hours a day? Oh, hell yeah. 25 yes. if there were 25 like in a day. <laughs> if there was. Have done for Wouldn't years. Wouldn't we all? <laughs> and you can see in the background there the, the uh, portable stage equipment looking lovely at night time. Um, the good thing about that stage is it can, as you said, it can literally roll up anywhere. The whole thing opens up with an extended stage frontage with all of the sound on the side. And the public obviously can pay to come and do that or they can basically come in and, and watch something. And the somethings are the new things you've had to find. Yes, yeah, so uh, it's... When we announced the dance floor to everyone in the industry, what I was surprised about was we were very quickly we were getting phone calls from fringe performers who weren't able to do their shows indoors because of all the current restrictions. Yeah as well as quite a few French performers who are quite, I guess, excited at the possibility of doing something outdoors. Because, you know, outdoors on a summer's evening can be, can be absolutely fabulous. spectacular. Yes. And, um, and so... Then and actually, fresh air. Yes. So... COVID safe. What about the mask situation? Does everybody have to wear masks? No masks required. It's all outdoors. So Excellent. that's, a, as you said, a breath, a breath, breath of, of fresh, fresh air. air. So you don't have to Hopefully. mask up. And like what that. happens if it rains? Ah, good question. Well... Firstly, it's summer, so the risk of rain is low. Um, I'm <laughs> Take an optimist. a summer shower. I'm an optimist. <laughs> it's not going to rain. It's not going to oh, rain. Of course not. <laughs> no, look, last Tuesday is a good example. Uh, last Tuesday, forecast was bad. We messaged everyone during the day saying, look, we're going to postpone. We postponed it to Thursday, two days later, and it went ahead perfectly. Yeah. You know, people are so flexible these days because of COVID. You know, five sort of years ago, maybe that wouldn't have but been... But have you found that people are a bit reticent to come out or to book for things at the moment? I guess there is an element of that, mm. but because we're outdoors, the people who are on the edge, they're more inclined to come than they would to a normal sort of indoor... I guess so, but at the same time, all the venues that are indoors, intense, or like my theatre, what I call a hard-top theatre because yeah. it's a theatre... Um, people are just a little bit unsure. Do I book? What do I have to show? Am I double vax? Do I have an issue? Yeah. Do you have any of those issues? Oh, well, look, I think every venue in uh, Adelaide has dealt with the whole vaccination requirement situation since the state government l left it up to sort of private businesses to work out what they want to do. Um, we decided in the outdoor venue, and that's different to our dance studio, which is indoors, yeah. we decided in the outdoor venues that we weren't going to go down the path of um, a requirement for double vaccination. Mm -hmm. An extra thing to check on the door, an extra divisive issue, we just wanted to um, not have to deal with that. And given it's outdoors and all the data that I could read suggested that outdoor venues were so, so, so much was, safer than yeah. indoor venues, mm -hmm. that's the route we went. Well, it's um, fresh air. Yeah, exactly. And, 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 you know, when I'm out there, I never thought about it beforehand, but when I'm thinking about the decision to you know, not do require double vaccination, I, you do notice there's a constant breeze. And it was like, you know, I'm not a scientist, and, but you can see how... Just don't can... stand downwind if you've got COVID. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, I think uh, with, with so many of the public now double vaccinated at least, the, op yeah. the opportunities for this passing... If it happens, it happens, and frankly, as I've ex as I've discovered for myself, it's just like getting a summer cold for a couple of days, and mm. then it's over. And it's so easy now to be tested with the rat tests and so on. Mm. It shouldn't stop anyone from going out and having a great time. Yeah, yeah. And so in the last week, we've seen a a, a significant change in attitude. I think 
Um, you know, when I reflect on what's happening at the dance studio, more people are coming, more inquiries are coming through. So mm -hmm. I'm sure there are some people who are staying at home and being very, very cautious. But um, Well, I guess it's human nature. So the venue is called? The Quick Steps Outdoor Ballroom. And the public can go and dance there? Yes, yes. And so not only that, but there are shows on there as well. So is there a website people can check out? Yes, so we're re registered with the Fringe, so we're an Adelaide uh, Fringe venue. So mm -hmm. if you go to the Fringe venue, you, uh, the Fringe website, it's a you'll great website. You'll see everything that's there. Search for Outdoor Ballroom and you'll Brilliant. see all the shows which we're putting on. So, Fantastic. Right. And congratulations on this amazing last-minute job that you've done. I mean, really, it is amazing. It's a, it's a three-person team. Yep. There's two of us here. There's Seb, myself... And Ben, and ben yep. uh, with working the stage, on site now with the stage <laughs> truck. He's on the site right now. Yeah. Yep. Um, well, I mean, that's what's got to happen because you've got to make these things happen. You've got three more weeks for it to go, yeah. and I hope it's fabulous for you all. Oh, thank you very much. Thank Thanks you. very much, both of you, for coming in. And just remember, the Adelaide Fringe is on at the moment. A special thanks to Sebastian and Andy for joining us. We've got some more people coming up with another show from the Fringe in just. A Welcome back. It's always great to talk to people who have formed a new theatre company. And our special guests in this segment are John Mondello and Nicole Ramesh from Exeunt, pursued by a bear, <laughs> productions. Welcome. Thank you for Thank having you us. For having you. Now, excited. the good thing about you guys is you've just completed a three-year course at the Adelaide University, uh, at the, the new music theatre course, which for the first year has thrown out all these lovely new music theatre people. Yes, yes, we just finished uh, November last year. Mm -hmm. oh. And so you're doing what you've been training to do for the last probably all your life in reality, uh, which is you've put together a show mm -hmm. which is called... A Grand Night for Singing. So that means that it's probably got something to do with Rodgers and Hammerstein. Am yes. I guessing correctly? You are correct. On the money. Yes. <laughs> On the money, okay. Which means that you're singing some classic songs, performing yes. some classic songs. Um, from mm -hmm. Sound of Music, For King and I. Um, Cinderella. Cinderella. Mm -hmm. Even I was like State Fair, Pipe Dream, Allegro, a whole range of Roger Hanstein canon. Yeah. Yes, they're probably, yes, it's the American songbook in many ways, isn't Pretty it? Pretty much, yes. Yeah. So what made you come up with this idea? Who do I talk to first? <laughs> oh, <Ta> -da. <laughs> yes, that is my okay. name. Um, so last year, um, my good friend Andrew, who's also in the company, and I, we were in rehearsals for a university show. Yep. And just looking through my collection of music, and I just found this score for a grand night for singing. Right. And I went, Andrew. It's a grand night for singing. Okay. Exactly. And I was like, Andrew, this is beautiful music. We should put it on. And we right. both laughed as the joke. So, somebody your age, what attracts you to music that was written sort of what, seventy years ago? Well, I think that the, the complexity of the music is beautiful regardless of the age or of era that it's performed in. Mm -hmm. And also the messages are timeless. The stories of love, heartbreak, loss, um, connection, that speaks to anyone regardless. There's no hip-hop in it. No. I wish. <laughs> That's my... <laughs> I'm more than happy to do. Mm. I only say that because when, when people look at young people, they expect that's all they'll know about. Mm. Yeah. If it isn't on TikTok or Instagram, <laughs> what would they know? Mm. So uh, how did you discover all of this? Oh, well, as you said, you found it. But how did you discover that this was sort of a whole world of music? Um, for Rogers and Hamstein Cannon or just musical theatre in general? Probably just music theatre in general because... There's been, a, a lot of kids are sort of brought up with a bit of this at school. They're doing the Disney Junior shows or mm -hmm. whatever. But w where did your passion grow that you wanted to do a three-year university course? Well, I personally began in the classical music scene. So mm -hmm. I was playing piano, I was in choirs, I was composing quite early on. But then at a family trip to London when I was 15, we watched Oliver just on um, oh. sudden, sudden Whim. Okay. And I went... This is amazing. I want to be there. This is what I want to do. Exactly. And from that, I followed training, just followed the dream and ended up here. So, Nicole, for you, your story? My story. Um, I'm more based in acting and stage theatre. Right. Until um, I was in Singapore and I saw Phantom, Phantom of oh, the Opera. So, you originally came from Singapore? 
Okay. One of my favourite places, as oh, you said before. Absolutely, yes. Mm -hmm. I'll see you there one day. City of the future. <laughs> yeah, the new future. Um, yeah, and the moment the overture played, I was done for. I was like, this is what I want to do. And like to combine acting, singing and dancing, yeah. the dream. Perfect. Well, it's a triple threat, but it's, mm -hmm. it is really what entertainers all should be these yeah. days. Exactly. Because you need the breadth of all that knowledge to play every character in virtually everything. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone talks about Hugh Jackman and how good he is at tapping or dancing generally or whatever, but the reality is he can play everything and has. So where do you see your future going, apart from this show and hoping that everyone's going to come to the little theatre in the uni and see you? Um, personally, um, the, the dream at the end of it is Broadway or West End. We'll see how that goes in the next few years. But I just want to be making more shows and performing more music for the next few now, years. What do you think's wrong with working in Australia? Why, why do young people think that that's the be end and end all to go to Broadway? I think one of the biggest things of international is the attraction that um, a lot of the new works are coming from there. So, um, so why aren't you writing it yourself? I'm hoping to but that will take some time and some life experience we'll still have to find. Well, yes and no. You know, I think, um, I think for most people mm -hmm. you, it's got to come from within you because it's your new that's going to make you somebody because the people that have written these shows have all been done a million times mm -hmm. and we've all seen them a million times. What have you got to offer that's different? I ask everybody this of question, course. by the way. <laughs> <laughs> because I think... We need to develop more young producers, and that's basically what you're doing with this show. You're yes. producing a show. Sure, you're using someone else's material, but you've got to come up with a style for that. Am I saying something that's too much? No, it's absolutely true. Mm -hmm. I, and I think, especially with this show and how we're taking our take on it, as younger people of a diverse cast and background mm -hmm. who are producing older work and materials, mm -hmm. and that that's what makes it special for us. Are you trying to give it a new life, or a new... Meaning? Yes, I think our interpretation is more youthful than it's traditionally performed by. Mm -hmm. um, but that also means that we have all of our range of backgrounds. And yes. Which is what makes it attractive to us and hopefully to audiences as well. So one of the questions I often ask people mm -hmm. is, who do you feel your audience is for a show like this? It's interesting because the material obviously lends more to the classics and the older um, generation. However, with our take and with our cast being more of a contemporary um, yeah, and our age range is what, from 20 to like 25. So it's a good, we can provide the classic songs, but with our contemporary take and like a meet in the middle situation. So right. it's a bit for everybody. Right, a bit for everybody. Yeah. It's a good way to sell it. Now, is that difficult too? You're a young company basically starting off. You've chosen a production name that comes from... Uh, Shakespeare, yes. A Winter's Tale, Act 3. Yes, <laughs> and the pursued by a bear means... To be uh, exit chased by a bear. Yes, <laughs> and so the, the villain in the piece is chased by a bear and can disappear <laughs> and the hero doesn't have to kill them or whatever, <laughs> which is an interesting take. Mm -hmm. I don't know that because I looked it up. <laughs> <laughs> However, oh, I didn't know that before, but it's quite interesting that you should pick that. Um, but... This company, is this a production, uh, like your unit, is that just for this or are you hoping to build more for other things? We definitely hope to produce more shows and to see where it goes because um, it's not it's a, such a close-knit group of friends like Nicole and myself yeah. and the others. Well, you've uh, been together for three years. Exactly. We know how we work. Like and a marriage. Yes, almost exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I notice you're holding hands. Is this something you need to do? <laughs> We're only show couples. <laughs> show couple, OK. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So uh, um, do you have another production in mind after this, after The Fringe, or are you hoping that during The Fringe someone's going to see this and say, this is what we need to tour? We would love that to happen. Um, but uh, The Fringe offers that, you know. The Fringe offers all those opportunities to connect with overseas and local producers exactly. in Australia. We're hoping to find um, that someone may perhaps see it and want to pick it up, because that'd be amazing for us. But we do have plans for future things. Oh, we've got some pictures, I almost yes. forgot, of you <laughs> guys in rehearsal. Let's have a look at these. Look at so it, they're very subtle in that they've put their branding on all these pictures. <laughs> yes, behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, you're not in costume for this at the moment. No, not no. yet. Uh, I can see a nice chaise lounge in the back. <laughs> Here's some more. Singing. And obviously you're in rehearsal during these. Oh, surprise, surprise. <laughs> Has bear. it been difficult? Who's the teddy bear? Um, so that is um, our mascot, inspired by, pursued oh. by a bear. <laughs> oh, okay, of course, <laughs> yeah. of course, of course. 
Look, it's great, and congratulations to you for setting this up. Thank you. Thank you. Um, things like costumes and, and general production, are there sets involved, props um, involved? In terms of costuming, it's all self-provided because it is, for our take, just nice um, nightwear, I'd describe it. Yep. Just suits, um, waistcoats, cocktail dresses and mm -hmm. the like. Yep. Um, Set-wise, um, we've kept it quite minimal, um, set of stools, but we've also um, been able to rent a frame from the State Theatre, mm -hmm. which would be quite cool. It allows us to put a keyboard inside and hook it up to the sound system, oh, as opposed brilliant. to bring a grand piano in and have it talk about, which would be a lot more effort. And this is obviously a studio at the uni that yes. you're rehearsing mm -hmm. in. That's been very handy for you, I imagine, to have a space that you can actually put all this together in. Very helpful. Extremely. They'd be yeah. super supportive of us. Mm -hmm. So for somebody who's thinking, this is not now about the fringe we're talking about, but for someone who's thinking about what do I, how do I get into the industry, how would you recommend? Both of you. Both of us. Um, I would highly recommend absorb as much as you can. Go to every play, go to every musical you can, especially Fringe Time. Go to all the shows that you can. Um, definitely take up training. I know that may not be available to a lot of people, but there are scholarships and it pretty much is if you're if you're younger. It pretty yeah, much um, is lots of schools. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, there are a lot of um, scholarships involved as well. Which, uh, but you have to audition to get into the course that you've done. So yeah. you have to be sort of more than halfway there already, would you say? Uh, yes. Some uh, training would help, I'd say. Some training would help, yeah. for sure. So you know what you're in for, basically. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Because it really is a bit of a life commitment, isn't it? It's a lifestyle, mm -hmm. yes. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Got 30 seconds to tell us why we should see your show. Um, you should come watch A Grand Night for Singing at the Little Theatre because this is a show of timeless stories of love, connection and hope, which I think we all need in this time. Do we ever, especially with COVID. Exactly. Mm. And good luck with that. So are people wearing masks for that? Yes, it yep. is a double vax venue and masks as well. Right, OK, because it's in the Adelaide Uni, yes. in the Little Theatre. Uh, we'll be back just to say goodbye and just to recap on the people we've met in this program. We'll see you in a moment. So you know a little bit more about the things happening at this year's Fringe, but of course there's over a thousand shows. But Sebastian, so just remind us what you're doing for the Fringe. Well, our new venue, the Quick Steps Outdoor Ballroom on Light Square, is hosting a variety of circus and dance events. And, uh, and it's outdoors and you don't have to wear a mask. That's spot on. Yep. And Andy, you've put this amazing stage in. How long did it take you? The floor took us two days to put down, but it took us a fortnight to get the materials and machine it. And Ben came in with the uh, theatre truck and put that in. Uh, and that's all in the about lights and sound, yeah. All the lights and sound. Amazing. And your show is on? The 22nd, 22nd to the 27th of February yep. at the Little Theatre at the University of Adelaide. So it's this week it's on? This week. Fantastic. And how excited are you? <laughs> I can't get up. I need to get up my seat. So excited. I love it. Look, how important is it that people support something like The Fringe? Uh, hugely. A good question for all of you, actually. It's, uh, it, it's, it, what, it's what makes Adelaide, really, I reckon. It's, uh, it's really the heart of Adelaide entertainment. Exactly. And the interesting thing is there's more money generated in the Adelaide Fringe than any other thing that happens in Australia as a single event. So it's actually very important for government and for all of us because it really provides, it's entertainment is food for the mind, as mm. they say. Exactly. And we all need that. And we need you to keep watching the show and enjoying the fringe as it's happening in Adelaide right now. To all of our Melbourne viewers, we wish you were here. So until next time on our time, our sincere thanks to Sebastian, to Andy, to John and to Nicole. Good luck for the fringe and we'll see you next time on our time. Thank you. Thank oh, you. Keep yourself nice till then, by the way. <laughs>